Dueling Dragons has been revived. Well, kind of. Last week, the track started to be installed in Universal Orlando's third park, Epic Universe. This rumored mock dueling coaster looks to be one of the best coasters in the resort and has opportunity to be the best in the world. Today's video, we will be taking a deep dive into this rumored project, as well as analyzing the layout and predicting how good it will be. Okay, first off, the rumored coaster name is supposed to be Starfall Racers, which in all honesty, I don't really like, but we'll roll with it. It's supposed to be somewhat space-themed, though it's an outdoor coaster, so how space-themed it will be? Probably not that much. I'm hoping they do something monumental with the first indoor launch and make it somewhat cool, otherwise the theme is obviously going to be nothing to write home about on this ride, but maybe they'll add a few outdoor sets, who knows. So this coaster is obviously made by Mach. I think Mach is a pretty average manufacturer. They make good coasters, some of them elite, most of them are not. But they are smooth, reliable, and a quality experience. When I think of Mach, these large-scale coasters don't really come to mind. Manta at my home park is very tiny. Copperhead Strike is not even above 100 feet. So yeah, but Mach has built some masterpieces before. I am mainly thinking of DC Rivals Hyper Coaster, which may be the best coaster in the world, I have no idea, but there's also some other classics like Helix. I feel like Mach is approaching their golden age. Like look at Ride to Happiness, the new hyper coaster that they built, and the one compact launch coaster in China. Whatever, I'm just trying to say that Mach is getting better and better, and Starfall Racers might be the perfect example of their capabilities. Another thing about Mach that I really like is their trains. Their restraints are so comfortable, it's like a worse version of B&M clamshells. <laughs> the seats are comfortable, and with just a lap bar, it's a very enjoyable experience. However, the lap bars do tighten down in the valleys, so you already know that's going to happen on Starfall Racers, if they keep the same restraint system of course, which I think they will because they use it on like every one of their models, including the Extreme Spinning Coaster, so yeah, expect that. The last thing about the manufacturer before I start talking about the coaster is the launches. Mach is known for weak launches. Now the question is, is that going to translate to Starfall? I think it is. Starfall's airtime hills, inversions, and just layout looks to need to have a lot of speed to carry through. I mean, we have only seen the fan-made render and a few pieces of the track put in, but still, the speed has to be there. The launch may not be incredibly forceful in terms of, like, acceleration, but I can guarantee you that this will get you up to a good-ass speed. I mean, look at that Mach launch coaster in Suzu Forest Land that's opening next year. In that POV, the Mach launch absolutely hits, and I definitely think it could in Starfall. Let's hope for your sake and for mine that the launch is very strong. Okay, enough about Mach. Let's talk about the coaster that they are building, Starfall. When the layout starts with a 180 degree turn out of the station. How unoriginal, right? No! Jokes aside, you turn around into a launch that takes place directly under the station. In the POV made by Amusement Insider, the train stops for a few seconds before launching. I think it would be really cool if they put some pre-launch audio cue, lights, music, something. I mean, I'm hoping for onboard audio on the whole thing, but it's like hit or miss these days. Every coaster has had it except for their newest edition, Velocicoaster. So yeah, this is the one indoor part of the ride and the one part of the ride that is reasonable to have theming. I mean, except for the queue and station. That better be immaculate. So I hope Universal does something insanely cool with the first launch. After this first launch, you go straight into an airtime hill, which looks to give some wicked ejector, and with just a lap bar, man RMC, you have yourself a competitor. This then drops back into another airtime hill with a turnout on top. This is where the two trains separate from dueling, and honestly I think it looks to be one of the coolest parts of the ride. You then have two airtime hills where one goes over the other, I will think this will be a pretty just average part of the ride. Yes, you still have the dueling element, but I don't think it's going to be out of this world. Following this, you hit some more bunny hills on opposite sides of the station before hitting this turnaround where the coaster trains go at each other. This looks like probably the highlighting moment on the ride, at least for me. Everyone is talking about that one element that we'll talk about later, but like turning around and seeing the coaster you're dueling and flying right by them, that looks to be a perfect element. You then hit another one of those interlocking airtime hills before hitting the second launch, which I think is going to be a rolling launch. So the first half is over. What are my thoughts? It looks to be a dueling airtime machine. It's nothing out of this world. I mean, if Twisted Claws is dueled every time, then I think it would be a pretty even matchup, but the dueling elements on this coaster are just way cooler. Yes, cooler than the wave term and the zero-g stuff. I think it's so cool how the trains turn away from each other and then come back at one another after interlocking airtime hills. I mean, it's nothing we haven't seen before. This series of dueling elements is on like every other dueling wood coaster, but the airtime enforces are probably what will make this so memorable and the second half. The rolling launch sets you up into this wicked element. It's really hard to explain, but this is how it goes. 
as one train is going up the hill, one inverts over the other, and back down, the one that didn't invert, inverts over the other. So each train inverts once, and both interlock in this one section. This element is patented by Mach. I have no idea how you patent an element. Are you like, guys, I have a patent on the airtime hill, no one else can do it. Like, I feel like you're just taking away from other companies by patenting an element. It's free real estate. And this specific element, I really don't know how repeatable it is, so I just find that really weird. After this whack-ass element, you go into a more of a twister segment that of course has tons of airtime. I don't feel a need to explain this segment very in depth, it's just some turns in an interlocking airtime hill, and then a pop into the brake run. So yeah, that's the entire layout in a nutshell. This seems to be a very solid mock coaster, in fact I think it will be their best non-spinning model. How about no? I guarantee you Ride to Happiness will still blow this out of the water, but it will beat Helix, Copper Red Strike, and even DC Rivals Hyper Coaster for the best non-spinning coaster. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So what does this have to do with Dueling Dragons? Quite literally nothing. I just felt like adding that as a good title. Dueling Dragons was probably the best dueling coaster in terms of elements that mesh together, and now that Dueling Dragons is defunct, Starfall Racers will probably replace the title. The only color coaster where it maximizes on its dueling capabilities in a way that I have never seen before is probably Twisted Colossus, but that never duels, or maybe that one invert sit down pair in China, though Starfall is probably going to be much better. So yeah, it's only really related to Dueling Dragons, as it's a very good dueling coaster with a lot of signature elements, it would be the perfect replacement to Dueling Dragons, except it's an epic universe. Now the real question is, will this be the best universal coaster? My answer to that is simply no. This might be the best raw coaster in terms of forces, but I don't think it will be the best overall experience. Velocicoaster is a full package that comes with theming and an amazing environment. This being off the hub kind of puts it in a bad spot, and because it's an outdoor coaster that takes up a lot of space, I don't think Universal will put in over the top theming, and I don't think it will be better than something like Velocicoaster. Then again, who knows, I haven't even ridden Velocicoaster. Two more weeks, two more weeks, and I'll be there. Besides the lack of theming, I have one more complaint. The color palette of this coaster is absolutely disgusting. One track is supposed to be yellow, and the other green, but to call the other track green is an absolute disgrace. It's literally just a slightly darker shade of yellow. I don't mind the one track being yellow, it's not a terribly bad <laughs> yellow, but when you make the other track a slightly different shade of it, it kind of looks like a mistake and you can confuse the two tracks pretty easily. Personally, I think they should have gone with the yellow and black combination, and ran trains of the opposite color on each track, like the black track has yellow trains, and I think it would have looked much better, and not like a total eyesore. So yeah, that's Starfall Racers in a nutshell. It will be a solid addition to Universal's Epic Universe, and probably be the standout attraction. It will probably have amazing operations, and will probably have a lot of airtime. We don't really know anything for sure, as it's not open yet, but I cannot wait to get out and ride this when it does. Let me know your thoughts on this coaster in the comment section below. That's all for today's video. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Good. Bye.